Today I would like to talk about special variables in OpenSCAD. In the OpenSCAD user manual, you can see that special variables are all defined with a dollar sign at the beginning. Uh, and the three that they list right at the top are FA, FS, and FN. These three particular special variables are used to define how many facets to subdivide cylinders and spheres into. Uh, basically, OpenSCAD will always output flat facets. There's, there's, no, there's no real rounded surfaces that are going to be exported um, into an STL file, so you have to approximate them. And uh, these variables will determine how it approximates them. So the first one is FA. FA defines by angle. And you can read a bit more about it, but basically the smaller the angle it defines, the higher the resolution. So an angle of 1 produces a sphere and a cylinder that look like this, where if I go up to, say, 30, oops, excuse me there, need to reload the file. If I go up to 30, we are going to see that they become a lot rougher. Uh, the next one is FS, which instead of defining the angles that the facets will have, it actually defines the length of them themselves. So in this case, 30 makes it pretty ridiculous. It tries to make each one of these 30 long. Um, and of course, if you get smaller, you get better resolution. And you can get some pretty decent resolution out of these. Uh, my favorite one to use, however, is FN. This is the one that is explicit. So, for instance, if I want to divide up the circle that defines this, this cylinder into 25 separate, separate segments, I simply put 25. So now I can be sure that this is exactly 25. Uh, the thing I like about this is that what I've actually created here is a regular polygon with 25 sides. Now, for the most part, you don't need a regular polygon with 25 sides. However, in OpenSCAD, if you want to do something like a triangular prism, you generally have to go into the 2D subsystem, define your triangle, and then extrude it upwards. Well, with this, we can cheat. If we need an equilateral triangle, I simply put in FN3, and sure enough, my cylinder becomes a nice triangular prism. Meanwhile, my circle has trouble, or my sphere has trouble even rendering into a three dimensions. So I'm going to just take that one out for now. So this is useful if you need odd shapes like a triangle or, um, or, or, or other regular polygons. My favorite and probably mo the most useful regular polygon to use is a hexagon. The reason a hexagon is so useful is because uh, a nut for a, from a nut and bolt is shaped like a hexagon. Um, if you look at, say, the riprap or other, other 3D printed machinery, you find that they use a lot of captured nuts. In other words, a nut fits into a, a section that's been removed or, or not printed of a 3D object, the negative, and then uh, the bolt goes into it, and because it's captured and held in place by the hexagon that it's lying in, it, it doesn't move. This is actually the basis for how um, the axes on, say, a riprap work, at least the, the, the z-axis of the Mendel. Uh, so let me show you how this can be used pretty easily here. Say I have a part, oops, and we're going to say it's a cube, and it's going to be 50 by 50 by 50, nice, easy to work with numbers, and I'm also going to center it, because that's also kind of nice. Uh, a lot of times it's good to work off of reference like that. And I'm just going to do a difference between these two objects. Well, you can't quite see it now, but if I translate my cylinder up a little bit, so 25 in the z direction should put me halfway through, you'll see that it's an easy way to make a captured nut inside of a part. Now the problem is, say this is a captured nut and I need to have uh, a bolt go through this piece. Well. If I were to put in another cylinder right now, um, this would be a problem because, let me show you why. Uh, let's make this R equals, let's say 6 would be good. H equals has to be larger than that, so let's just make it 60. And of course, center equals true. Oop. 
and I should probably subtract that from the model as well, shouldn't I? Don't you think OpenSCAD needs a, a better editor? I think it does. So, you see, now the hole I created is, um, is also a hexagon, and that's not really what I wanted to be. I wanted this to be, a, you know, a, a cylinder. So, instead of defining my fn equals 6 up here, I can take that out and just explicitly tell it only for this one, go equal to 6. And now, when I go to re-render, you'll see I have a captured nut, a cylinder where the bolt will go, and uh, I can just screw screw right into here with the capture nut and this part will work even though it really doesn't do anything. So hope you learned something, hope you find this tip useful and I hope you make some really really great stuff with it. Thank you.